Bismillah and Alhamdulillah. My dear sisters and my brothers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This is your brother Abdus Salam. Today I would like to speak about, in brief, about something that has. Um, well, I usually do not get into film critiques and talking about uh, documentaries or things like that because I consider that each and every human out there is responsible for what they intake. When you go home and you turn your television on, you're free to watch what you want to watch. At the end of the day, on Judgment Day, you will be asked about what you have let in your brain, what you let other people influence you. Because these days, whatever you see on television, hear on radio, is somebody trying to convince you to what they believe is what should you what you should believe in these days uh, so if you are living in the united kingdom or the united states or somewhere in the western world in europe or things like that you would have seen some posters about a new uh, sci-fi series called the acolytes or the acolyte and uh, it's a star wars Episodes Now they take a character from Star Wars and they develop it and make it in their own uh, series. And they have made so many uh, of them. The Mandalorian is one that comes to mind. And uh, what else? I, uh, on top of my head, uh, you see what I mean? Uh, a young lady called Leslie Headland, born in 1980, uh, who started her life as a personal assistant to Harvey Weinstein or Weinstein, a man who has been exposed because of his uh, he's the head and CEO and founder of Miramax. Miramax is a company which makes movies like Sony and so on and so forth. He works in Hollywood. Uh, he's a Jewish. And of course, because <laughs> uh, who else would be there? But anyhow, so uh, Harvey Weinstein used to, uh, uh, he would find ca uh, new characters for movies, a very sexy actress. And then he would invite her to his suite. He finds he's married, he's got children and everything. But he would find a way of luring this new talent a girl, a young, pretty woman who is looking for an opportunity to break into Hollywood. So what he does is he invites her home and tries to have sex with her. Of course, he puts her, her career on one tip of the balance and sex with him on the other side. And whatever she does in that night will dictate her future in movies. Many women in Hollywood have been subjected to sexual harassment, sexual abuse, and so on and so forth. Uh, Harvey Weinstein has been uh, taken down, and, and the Me Too movement came because of that, because of how Harvey Weinstein... I would strongly encourage you to go and watch Harvey Weinstein's The Upnati Documentaries on YouTube, his life, and things like that, and you understand how Hollywood uh, works and why the actresses behave the way they do. Anyhow, Leslie Headland, the, the girl or the woman behind the acolyte, the one who wrote the acolyte, worked as four years as a personal assistant to the most devious sexual predator, sexual weird man that you can ever uh, come or face. She worked four years, which means she witnessed firsthand his crooked and sickening behaviors. Anyhow, after that, and she evolved, of course, until she joined Disney. A little bit about Disney. Walt Disney, I'm not going to get into details about his life, but Walt Disney had a very difficult start in his life. He was broke, born in York City, and uh, as story or the, the history has it, they were, him and his wife were renting a room in somewhere in New York City. And because they were broke, Walt Disney was a scriptwriter. He wanted to break in into the movie industry. And, uh, but of course, as you know, being a musician and artist, it always takes longer. And because 
artists do not have a source of income, they tend to lead a very difficult life at the beginning, and then once they get discovered or get known and they get rich, their life changes. Walt Disney is no difference to that. But in the room where he was living, or the small apartment where he was living with his wife, they had mice, lots of them. And one day he was complaining about these mice and how they invaded the apartment. His wife told him, you write scripts, right? He goes, yes. She goes, why don't you write scripts about mice? And that's how Mickey Mouse came to life. He did one pilot, i.e. Once, once, one episode of something, and he was successful. And then he started writing, 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 until he got very rich. And the calamity and the problem of the mice was at the source of the richness of Walt Disney. Walt Disney then uh, niched as a niche, marketed himself uh, as a family entertainment company. I remember long ago, not even 20 years ago, when something is made by Disney, you are certain that it is family-oriented. It's something that the family can watch together. But that has changed. Since Disney was taken by other people, people with an agenda. In America right now, there is a movement that says, Go woke, W-O-K-E, go broke. And what the woke movement is really, in its simplistic form, is all these minorities, all these minorities, what they say is these minorities must not be offended in any way or shape or form. For example, you can't say anything against Muslims. Why Muslims? Because they are sensitive about other things. Or you can say anything about the Jews and you can say anything about the, uh, homosexuals and you can say nothing about these things. So, and the woke came here, came to be. Hollywood embraced that, or is embracing that, and that's why you see in, now on television, before, in movies, it was normal a man kissing a woman, or a woman kissing a man, fine. A man falling in love with a woman, a woman falling in love with a man, fine. A man sleeping with a woman, a woman sleeping with a man, fine. A husband and wife, male and female, and they have children, fine. But since the woke movement started, we started seeing things like two men together, married to each other, husband and wife. It does my head in, but anyhow, yeah. and I'm sure it does yours as well. And you see two women, two females, husband and wife. And then they adopt children and they become mom and dad. I feel sorry for these children. By every stretch of anything, I feel sorry for these kids who, like any other kids, come to life. They open their eyes and they see a man and a man. That's my mother and that's my dad. And then they go to school and they see every other child has a female mother and a male dad. Imagine you being in that situation. I would not wish it on my worst enemy. Anyhow. Disney then started going woke. It, and, and gradually, gradually, I used to see Star Wars, uh, Skywalker, and uh, uh, Anakin Skywalker, and you see Darth Vader, and you've got uh, Solo Han, and you've got all these characters, right? And slowly, slowly, the Jedi became a woman, a young girl. And we know the capabilities of girls are not like that of a man. No matter what the sexist would want us to believe, we can never, ever have a man and a woman equal in every capacity, capabilities, in the way we are, things like that. Man, we, Allah created us for a purpose. Ladies, he created them for a purpose. When a man does the purpose of the woman, or the woman does the purpose of a man, then there is an imbalance in the galaxy, in the force, so to speak. And this is what the homosexual people want us to do, is to accept them as something normal, when in fact it is not normal. You see, uh, one day I was, what was I, I was eating, yeah. 
And uh, I was, I, I had Netflix on, sometimes I just put television for a company, for the noise, for the background. And I had the Netflix or YouTube, something like, I was watching something, yeah. And something that I thought was benign, he was talking about a movie or something like that. And as I was eating, believe it or not, I put the food in my mouth, I was chewing, and I looked at the screen, and there was two men kissing each other, I threw what was in my mouth, I vomited the air. And I could not finish my meal. Why? Because that is totally abnormal. Well, no, the, uh, the homosexuals are going to jump up and down. But hey, relax, I'm not talking to you now. I'm talking to people like me who find that appalling, something that they reject. Let me give you this example of something that I lived personally, and then I go back to the acolyte, because it needs this introduction. A few years back in town, about six, seven years ago, I was on a training, and on that training, we were this group of people, we were about eight, nine people. We had three black people, and we had uh, about three or four people from different parts of uh, the world. We had a few from Latin America, from parts of Europe, and uh, we had, uh, I think, an Arab. So we were a mixture of people, that's what I want to say. And uh, on the, in, in that training we had, uh, about uh, six weeks training, I discovered a lot about humans. I discovered that the, uh, the Caribbean black people hated the African black people and were more racist with them than the white man is. And that blew my mind. And when I tried to reconcile between these people, it was almost like uh, reconciling water with fire. One of them had to exist. They cannot exist together. So I tried my best, I tried my best, and then I quitted and I became a neutral thing. Each one of them has his issues, each one of them has their accusations, even though they were just stereotypes, because we were just for training, they didn't, they just met. But hey, that's how the things are. In the group was a homosexual, and uh, we were talking one day, I was just talking to the other guys, and I saw the other guy was not with us everywhere. You know, when you go eat or sometimes you go grab something and when you have a break you talk to each other, things like that. The other guy, the homosexual guy, was always to the side. I know they hate this terminology, homosexual, and they like to be called gay people. And as I told this homosexual, I'll get to that. So one of them told me, do you know about that guy? I said, what's up with him? And he made a sign to me, which made me understand that the other guy was homosexual. That's why he's not mingling with us. I said, ha. Huh. And then I said, well, he should come. He's a human being at the end of the day. As long as he doesn't try to put his dirty laundry on us. Like, that's like, because they made the purpose for their lives to convert as many people as they can to accept them as they are. Oh, I guess I don't think so. If he comes here, he's going to start preaching and things like that. But anyhow, slowly, slowly, I started talking to that guy. And because sometimes <laughs> the way it started is the, the, the trainer had us in groups and we ended up with this guy in our group and we started talking. And, and then he came to me. He goes, uh, uh, he goes, I've been watching you, and of all these people, I believe you are the smartest of them all. He goes, because the way you speak, the way you formulate your sentences, the way you behave, he goes, I can see you are a smart, uh, interesting, intelligent gentleman. That's how he said it. I said, thank you very much. I said, I appreciate that. And then I asked him, why don't you come and sit with us? He goes, well, people do not accept me. And I looked at him, ignoring everything that the other people had told me. I said, except you. I said, what do you mean? He goes, I'm gay. He told me, I'm gay. I said, oh, you're homosexual. He goes, no, I'm gay. And then that was my first remark to him. I said, like this, I said, my brother, we all are gays. Just like we all are sad. We all are happy. We all are intelligent. 
as a taking one word, an adjective, and make it you that defines you is very wrong. Today we cannot use the term gay because gay in English literally means happy. That's it. That's all it means. If you go to the old songs that were made in the 50s, 60s, 70s before this pandemic spread, you find uh, singers that say, uh, I'm gay singing. And... But the moment they started using it for, to cover the hair, homosexuals, it became something that relates to them. And with that, we don't use it anymore. Because if I tell somebody I'm gay, they will, they're going to start straight away thinking, ah, it's homosexual. So I told him, my brother, we all are gays, but we all are not homosexuals. And he told me, that's interesting thing, because it's true, it's painful, but that's true. I said, why is it painful to you? That defines you. If you call me a, hetero, a heterosexual, meaning I am a man, I'm attracted to women, and a woman is attracted to me, man, I said, that's the, the natural, normal combination. He goes, but you gotta uh, accept that some of us are not like you. I said, I do accept that. But I said, just like I do not go, pushing down the throats of everyone, I know that I am straight. I don't do it. I just live my life. I don't care what people think. I am the way I am. I said, I expect others not to come push who they are down my throat. I don't have a problem with you being a homosexual. And I kept using homosexual with him. I said, I don't have a problem with you being a homosexual as long as your homosexuality does not interfere with my relationship with you, which in this case here, we are colleagues, we work with each other, things like that. He gets good deal. And then he started at one point because they cannot help it. He started bringing his LGBTQ plus and whatever comes after that. And that's when I told him, I said, my brother, I don't even remember his name. Subhanallah, I can't even remember. I said, when you guys alone, when you speak about me, us, what do you call us? I guess we call it the straight people. I told him then, in your own dictionary, you acknowledge that you are not straight. We are the straight. And for the first time, he says, I never looked at it that way. I said, because when you say to some of me, I am straight, and I point at you because you're different to me, what that makes you, you cannot be straight and not straight. It's already straight. And I said, the reason being is, somewhere down the line, everyone that had this disease, of sexual perversion, perversion is changing. I said, has decided that they are not as straight forthcoming as the other ones. Again, and we went on the conversation, and uh, uh, at one point he told me, he goes, I respect, he goes, Ben, I respect, Ben is my middle name, uh, he goes, I respect your views, he goes, some of them are painful to me, they are hurtful to us, as he says, but he goes, that's the truth, I cannot reject it. So, the concept of homosexuality is a very deeply rooted in us, in humans. And I will tell you why. You see, when Allah created humans, all right, he gave us tools to gauge, to understand our body. We have lips. And the lips are sensitive the way they are for so many things. For testing, for our sexual interaction with our partner, for so many things, the lips, yeah? So we use our lips in the mouth to gauge, to, to, to let things come into our uh, mouth. With the tongue, of course. The same if we go to our anus. The ring of the anus is made of the same tissue as our lips. And that's why we have homosexuality. And the reason Allah gave us that ring, which uh, the, the tissue is made like our lips, is so that we can feel when we go to the toilet. Imagine if the, our, the ring of our anus was not sensitive. We would never know what we are doing. But since Allah gave us that, 
guess what? Sometimes you go to the toilet to relieve yourself and it feels good. Why? Because what you threw out of your body interacted nicely with the ring of your anus. And nothing wrong with that because that's how we gauge what we are doing. This exists with animals, we exist with all creatures. But man had figured out that they can use that for another purpose. For us men, it's easy to fill in a hole. Be front or back, it's no, it's no big problem. Well, the, to most of us it is, but to the pervert it's easy. So homosexuality started through Disney. The agenda, the big agenda, is to convert, to put doubts in the minds of the little kids at school now through their sexual education and gender equality and all that kind of crap. What they do is they try to in inject in your child brain that being a boy or being a girl is not always as day and night. You actually, you might feel you are a boy, but deep inside there is something in you that feel, makes you feel you are a woman. And that's how they seed the, the first seeds of corruption in the hearts of children. So many kids who, if they were not put through this kind of brain programming, would never have gone into that world. But this is the agenda of these perverts. What happened is, we have, of course, as I said, sexual perversion is in the human DNA. You will never find a lion <laughs> suddenly dating another lion or a tiger male dating another tiger male and suddenly you have two tigers uh, mating with each other and sleeping. You, you never see that because they follow an instinct, a natural instinct that Allah gave them and they use that as it is. We humans, because we have the free will, we can choose this or that. Once I was researching an article about so many things and I found out, believe it or not, some men, and the perversion is more in men than women, who use their female dogs as sexual partners. That made me sick to the stomach. You know, that's just... But, you know, so th there is this problem with Disney where these people with perverted uh, sexual desires started creeping in. And they used the platform of Disney to corrupt the world. Just like here in England and some parts in Europe, they have outlawed speaking about homosexuality. If you say anything about LGBTQ, for example, if you are in the street and someone does that, and you go, you stupid homosexual, that's it. You're going to jail and it get why? Because it's outlaw. You can't insult someone like that. Even if they are really, but you can't. It's outlawed. Now the question comes in, how did that come to be? Well, the truth of the matter is, anyone who legislated this law is either himself is a pervert or his mind is corrupted. One of the two, because you cannot have somebody who is sane, right in their right mind, going, that's it. It's, it's, it's just outlawed. Again, if somebody is homosexual, that's their business. But as long as they keep it to themselves, they don't... Sometimes I see... It's, 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 it's mind cringing, really. One, <laughs> one day I was uh, on a bus, uh, going through central London, going down to the west, and uh, just... Uh, I'll, you know when people get on the bus and come out like that and I'm just sitting on my seat minding my own business looking at my phone like everybody does and two men kissed each other and coming in at that moment I turned my head not necessarily to avoid the scene but it just happened I was just turning my head and then I, <laughs> I smiled for something I was listening to on my earbuds it was only a uh, few minutes and the, the guy who came through the door came to me. And uh, he started talking to me, so I removed my earbuds. I thought he was going to ask me for a question. I didn't know. And he goes, uh, did, I disturb, did we disturb you? I said, did we? Who are you on about? He goes, me and my partner. And I looked at him. I said, where is your partner? 
he, he goes, no. He goes, when we kissed, and this is where it gets dangerous. He goes, when we kissed, you turn your face uh, in dislike. I told him, look. And this is what I said to him, look. I'm listening to something on my earbuds, and it's more interesting than what you're telling me, okay? So go away. And I put my earbuds, and he kept talking, and I turned my head, and I kept looking outside, and he stood there, did the monkey, and then he left. But that is the danger. That is the danger. If, if a man and a woman kissed each other, and the man came in, or the woman came in, and I turned my head at that moment, totally natural. There, I was not making any statement. It just happened that I turned my head and smiled something I heard. The man is not going to come to me and says, hey, excuse me, uh, did I disturb you by kissing my woman? It would not have happened. But that's where the problem is. So now, back to the acolyte and why you should not watch it, and more importantly, why you must not let your children watch it. <coughs> excuse me. The acolyte, as I said, Leslie Headland, this American young lady who worked four years for the most corrupt executive person in Hollywood, Harvey Weinstein. So this lady decided to put her head and write something for the Disney and Star Wars uh, saga. Herself, she is... Uh, homosexual, and I call them as it is. I'm not going to call her gay. She is homosexual. And my journey started with this when I saw, as I said, the advertisement for the Acolyte. Okay. And I said, yay, a new series of Star Wars. I was happy. But before getting into it, I said, let me see what the reviews say about it. And that's when I came face to face with this torrent, great number of criticism of this series. I said, huh? And then the more I saw it and the more I read about it, the more it's a complete flop. Totally flop. The world is actually opposing. It's standing against this acolyte series. So much so that in a uh, Rotten Tomato is where people rate movies. If you want to see how a movie is doing, just go to Rotten Tomato or, uh, or Red Tomato and then you'll see the this acolyte is getting 14% on, even to the fourth episode, 14, 1-4%. It's more than ridiculous, more than ridiculous. So, of course, what the uh, homosexual networks and all that bunch of people, or the LGBTQ, as they say, wanted to do is to fight the backlash of the public. So they had an interview with her. And uh, the host told her, so in, in the question he asked, he goes, oh, I guess the world uh, is not ready for such big work. Of course, he had to say that. He is homosexual himself. And then he said something that infuriated me, and I left very detailed, but very, very, uh, how do I put it, uh, not happy comment. on. Uh, he said, and the world feels threatened by being gay, by the gay people. I wrote, no, we're not threatened. We're just sick and tired of this rubbish, of this garbage. If we don't like what you're doing, we are misogynistic, we are rude, we are uh, haters, we hate gay people, blah, 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 blah. But if we accept it, that's it, we are the good people. And this is total rubbish, so something along those lines. So this lady here, Leslie, wrote this uh, acolyte. And in that, what she wants to portray is her own life projected on Star Wars. This girl, uh, Leslie, had landed the writer, the script writer, and the director as well, is herself homosexual. She is married to another woman, whom she calls her wife. And I can't get my head in. How, ha, ha, ha. How is a woman married to another woman and one is the wife and the other one husband when biologically the, 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 their bio, the way they are physiognomy, the body, they're the same. How, 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 how is one fulfilling the job of a husband when both of them are females? It just doesn't work. Just like when, uh, go back to that uh, homosexual guy in the training, uh, one day he was saying, my husband, 
And, and it felt so weird. I told him, how can he be your husband? How is that possible? He goes, no, we I said, so you are the wife? He goes, yes. And it is so, so weird. Really is. But anyhow. So she, she is, a, said she is the husband of her couple. And she wanted to portray the Star Wars saga, the acolyte. And the acolyte are the helpers of the leader. For example, if you are a commander or you are the mayor or you are the executive or the director of a company, the two, three people who help you run the company are called your acolyte. Alrighty? So that's what it is. An acolyte is just a definition of people. So she wants to put this kingdom of only females. Yeah, there are a few men here and there, but predominantly it's women. And instead of using the force like in Star Wars and Yoda and all these things, they use this stupid idea of a thread. You will see in the, in the trailer and the episode, I think one or two, where the two, you have two children, <laughs> two siblings, yeah? They born, the twins, and they are <clears throat> born to a, a woman and a woman. The two par parents are having an argument. One of the women says, I carry them. The other one said, I created them. Hello? How can, how can a woman create another baby? It's impossible. Allah stated in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal nas, O you humans, the entire human species, Inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa unza. We have created you from a male and a female. End of it. End of it. There is no other way. Not two men can have a child and not two women can have a child. In movies we can say it, in stories we can say it, but in reality it doesn't happen. In, in this Star Wars stupid uh, acolyte, the two ladies made two babies. And then the story goes on the vengeance and things like that. But it's all cringe after cringe after cringe. And the main idea that this stupid series of acolytes of the, and this stupid Leslie Headland who said, oh, I'd like to challenge people, make them uncomfortable, make them accept the others. And no, I don't accept it and it's my right. Because freedom of expression, my freedom to say what I don't like or I don't like, is exactly what it is. I should be free to say what I want. But you know, so the entire acolyte thing evolves around women being homosexuals, as they call them lesbians, but lesbians, again, it's another uh, covering, it's another camouflage of the reality. You are a homosexual, well, of the same sex, you're not heterosexual. And it goes on. The dangers. If you watch this kind of things whereby, you, like this one, two women make babies, and you go along with the idea, the dangers of this is this, what I'm going to tell you. When you watch a movie, your body, your brains, I'm going to talk about your head, what's, what's in that skull in the box, yeah? Your mind cannot make a difference between reality and fiction. Believe it or not. When you sit and you watch a movie, you forget that you are watching a movie and your mind looks like it is reality. It's the reality. This is why when in the movie something happens that makes you laugh, guess what? You laugh. And if in the movie there is a sad scene that calls to tears, you will cry. If in the movie it's a scary movie, let's say you are alone in your own home, you've closed the doors, you know nobody is inside your house and you're watching a horror movie. Guess what? You're going to get scared. Even though you know 100% that it's only a movie, these people are acting. There is no real thing. So if that is the case, why do you get scared? Well, it's simple. Because your mind forgets that it's a movie and thinks of it as it is. It projects your own world. It takes from that world and projects yours and creates a new world. 
So when you start watching and your children start watching this kind of crap, I'm sorry for using this, but I want to exactly call this acolyte as it is. It's a piece of human crap. Your child watches it, and guess what? That's how influences starts, start happening slowly. This day they watch this, another day watch that, and watch that, and it's always around the same thing, and your brain and your child's brain started formulating that, oh, it's okay to have a mother, two mothers. I wish I had two mothers. Always remember, the brain is easily distracted. It's easily seduced into so many different things. And then until one day you're home doing your life and, the, and your child comes home and tells you, Mom, I am no longer interested in girls or in boys. I like same sex. And then you start crying. You start jumping, you start making dua, you start, Ya Allah, you start reading Quran, you start doing charity, it will not help you. Why? Because you have allowed the brains of your children and your own to be corrupted with these agenda movies. That's what it is, agenda movies. So, if you want to protect your own minds, you've got to be critical when you watch a movie. Critical. In other words, when you see something on television that is wrong with your own belief, you must state it loud. Otherwise, your mind will take it as reality. If you keep quiet, your mind will think that you are in agreement with what you see. And that's very dangerous. Really dangerous. If you sit and you see two men kissing and you go, ah, yuck. First time it's yuck. Second time is yuck. Third time is yuck. Fourth time, I don't care. Fifth time, huh, it's only two, it's a human. Sixth time, who cares? Seventh time, huh, that man is nice, he kisses well. Eight times, oh, it's no problem, I, I like it's good. And then by the tenth, twelfth time, you'll start enjoying that. And that's where the problem is. It's those little steps which Allah has called in the Quran, La tattabi'u khutuwati shaitan. Do not follow the footsteps of a shaitan. As, as you know, for you to go from point A to point B, you need a number of footsteps. And if you make one footstep, you're closer to where you're going than when you didn't make that footstep. If you make two, you are two footsteps closer, and so on and so forth. So when you watch something corrupted on telly, first time, you get closer to that thing, even if you do not intend. But because we are humans, we are curious, especially in sexuality. And then before you know it, you will have that tendency. And so many people have gone corrupt in their sexuality just by looking at pictures. Don't believe me? Ask people who watch porno, uh, pornographic uh, uh, pictures and movies uh, on the internet. Watch how they get corrupted. You have a husband, a man who has his wife and life uh, goes on with its ups and downs. No problem with that. We're humans. And then the man started looking at pornogra porno pornography. Yeah, pornography. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, I get sometimes mixed up with these words because my daughters always make fun of me when I say American terminology is a word. So I say them the American way. They make fun of me. And uh, but you know. So w when your husband, or when the husband starts watching pornography and he starts to see all these girls and how they behave and their sexuality and things like that, straight away the mind will start comparing that woman is sexy, look at what she does, how she does, blah, blah, blah. And my wife is like a bag of rice. And then slowly, slowly his mind is no longer interested in the wife. Why? Because the man has fed him, the mind, some other steps. And before you know it, the husband starts chasing other women. And throughout my life, I dealt with so many couples where w when I talk with the man and after I speak to him a few times and they open up to me, they start telling me, you know what, I'm really sorry. I love my wife, but she's not good in bed as other women are. And that's where the problem lies. How did it all start? is they subjected, they exposed themselves to another world. And Allah 
has spoken about this in the Quran when he said وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ and tell the believers to limit of what they look at ذَلِكَ أَطْهَرُ لِقُلِبِهِمْ that act when they do it is it's cleaner for their hearts so if you are it's uh, for example now summer is coming girls are going to dress sexy that's the nature of women Allah created them like that women expose themselves it's like they put in the merchandise for which man is going to come to them and then they start picking up I like this one I don't like that one it's, uh, I'm putting it in blunt but that's what it is exactly literally that's what it is we men we don't get naked you don't see men get naked but yeah so that's how it is yeah so summer is coming and all these beautiful girls are in the streets something that makes a man's mouth water all right it's natural please don't give me that thing oh the taqwa the fear of allah don't worry about that because allah when uh, when Allah wanted to prevent the messenger, his messenger Muhammad, Allah's salam, peace be on all his messengers, when Allah wanted to terminate his marriage to other people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, لا يحل لك النساء من بعد. Women are not halal for you to marry after the one he married, even if you are pleased with their beauty. So the messenger of Allah married as he was, when he looks at a woman and he finds her beautiful, he used to like that. He is a man. So Allah told him, you cannot marry them even if you find them attractive. That's what it is in plain English. So if someone comes to me and shuts down his testosterone attitude, behavior, who we are as men, to me that's weird. And said that's what we've been living with. So Allah has told us that we must safeguard what we look at. The acolyte is a disaster. It's, it's, it's an open invitation to the world of crookedness, of uh, sexual perversion. This sexual perversion, if, if I was to meet this Leslie Headland, the girl who made this, uh, uh, this series, yeah? If I, if I sat down and asked her this question, how did it all start for you? How did you start a Sorry, it's the police that you can hear. I would ask her, how did you jump out from the wagon of straightness, straight people, normal people, to abnormal people? How? What? And she will tell you a story. I'm 100% sure. She will tell you a story and you're going to say, ha. in other words, had you avoided that, you would not be here. So the acolyte, my dear sisters and my brothers, is a show you must... I'm not saying you must not watch, entirely up to you. But please do not let your children watch it. And if they come home and talk to you about it, or they want to watch it, sit down with them and explain to them why you don't watch it, why you don't want them to watch it, the dangers of it, and you can let them hear and listen to my talk. Because a child, a young man, a young woman, Coming in their prime life, you know, when we start become a teenager and then we move in our 20s and things like that, that's our prime time. And we become sexually more active than any other time in our lives because that's how Allah made us. We are very sexually active because we start our life, we build families early, and as we grow, our sexual desires diminish because now we have children and life, we cater for the children, take care of them, and we move on. So you gotta sit down with your child, explain to them, her, him, why that thing there is dangerous, why that thing there is not for us and is more of a propaganda is more of a mind breaking into your own mind. At the end of the day, I want to say this. When Allah destroyed the people of Lot, in the Bible, Allah speaks about how, in the Quran, Allah speaks about them. So, the story is there. And it would have been enough for us for the Quran. But what I want to say by this, Christians and Jews know the story. The people who are not religious in Christianity are totally against that. And they find the Bible and the Quran and religion really their enemy. Why? Because Allah don't like them. End of it. 
But the truth of the matter is, let's ask our questions. Why did Allah destroy the people of Lot? Why did Allah send those angels that went to Lot? A, they went to Ibrahim. And when they went to Ibrahim, they went different to that when they went to Lot. What I mean by different? Their looks, when they, they faced Ibrahim, their appearance was different to that with Lot. With Ibrahim, there were three regular mm, normal men that came to Ibrahim. He saw them, he got uh, scared of them with their behavior, end of it. But when they went to Lot, in the distance from Ibrahim to Lut, they changed their physicality, the, their appearance. They morphed in something else. And angels can do that. Angels can do that. In the humans we see every single day, we do not know who of these people is an angel. Because once an angel takes the shape of a human, it's impossible for you to guess he is not a human. But that's another story for another day. Just like they did for Mary, the mother of Jesus, Jibril did. And the, those angels for Ibrahim and Lot and other angels that spoke to Miriam, to Ayub, to Zachariah, to Yahya, and so on and so forth. But anyhow, when they went to Lot, they morphed into three most attractive young men. When the, the corrupt people, the sexually corrupt people, see them, the, those uh, predators, this... Uh, the, uh, I forgot the, the, the name of these male predators that have, pedophiles, yes. When a pedophile sees them, his eyes and his mouth will cry. It's just Allah made them so sexy, so attractive. When they went to Lot, the moment Lot see, saw them, he felt very sad, stressed and depressed because they came to him as guests. Lot and the tradition back then was you always take care of your guests. But Lot had an argument with the people. His, the cities where he lived, uh, it's cities he used to give da'wah. He's a messenger of Allah. They had forbade him from talking to any strangers and warned them against what these people, the people of Lot, were doing. So the uh, agreement between them and Lot the messenger of Allah, is that he shuts his mouth up. Don't say anything to anybody. So when these three, sorry for this description, but you gotta have it in your mind, when this sexy uh, teenager went to Lot, the moment Lot saw them, he said, Oh Allah, what a difficult day that is going to be. His wife, when she saw those three beautiful uh, teenager young kids, she rushed out and told the rest of the city that the Lord has received the visit of the three, the most exquisite, the most sexually attractive boys. His people went to Lot. And then, of course, they sought Lot to deliver those children, these kids, to them. And that's when Lot refused and and then when he got very stressed because now he's in danger to, of losing his life his people were ready to kill him to get to these three boys and that's when these uh, three boys said to Lot oh Lot do not be sad or miserable there. we are messenger from, your, uh, from Allah and Allah has sent us to destroy your people uh, the myth and the legend has come that Allah destroyed the people of Lot because of their homosexuality. But that is not the truth. Allah had mentioned in the Quran 14, 14 major sins, major as in big, huge sins that the people of Lot had committed. But when Allah wanted to destroy them all, he brought one sin that they all shared in, no exception. The people of Lot used to be uh, highway thieves, but not all of them were highway thieves. It was a group of them, was 20 maybe out of uh, the entire city, not the entire city. They, they used to have uh, sex clubs, but not all of them went there. What I want to say is the other 13 big sins, 
they were performed with different people. Maybe this group did it, other people didn't, the other ones did, this one did it. But sexual perversion, homosexuality, is something everyone in that city did, except Lot and those who believed with him, and they were a minority. So when Allah wanted to punish the entire cities, he sent them the instigators that would get the entire cities join in together and Allah punish them all. We know at the end of time Allah is going to destroy the earth because at the end of the time all the sins for which Allah has destroyed other nations like Lut and Ad and Firaun and all these other people will be all present in the humans at the end of the time. The reason Allah told us about the nations he destroyed is to tell us at the end of time in this, on this life, on this earth, humanity will acquire all the reasons for which he destroyed the other people. And one of the major sins is homosexuality. Oppression, thievery, crimes, uh, murders, all this will become prevalent. They will become something normal on earth. And the last of all this will be homosexuality and that will be the reason why Allah will destroy everything. Sadly, all this LGBTQs and plus and minus and 16 and 7 and all these things are expedited and are fal they just going fastening they, to get there. I personally, Absalom, I don't care what a man or a woman does with their sexual needs and desires. That's them and Allah. And who, the one who's going to hold them accountable is Allah, not me. Already? But what I care about is I don't want anyone to come and shove those ideologies down my throat and force them on me. And when I resist, I, they give me all these list of accusations they already get. Oh, are, are you threatened by it? No, I'm not threatened with it. I don't like it. I cannot allow a drug dealer to be my friend and when I say don't be my friend because you're drug dealers, he tells you, oh, are you threatened by it? No, I'm not threatened by it. I'm just someone who respects my own self and what I want right now, I don't want the drugs, I don't want homosexuality, I don't want any of that thing there. That's your business, deal with it. Stop it. But that is not what these uh, homosexuals want. And the acolyte is nothing else but another button in the big shirt of perversion in all kinds of sexual uh, problems. Please, as again, one more time, The Acolyte is a movie or a series not for you. Uh, sadly, Disney these days is a woke uh, institution. And the woke, as I said earlier on, is they take... Uh, we have now a Muslim girl who is a superwoman. Who cares? But because she is Muslim, they want to to make Muslim feel good about themselves. So let them give, let's give them a superhero, and we have superhero woman. We have we have a Hulk. Why not have a She Hulk? And it flopped. We have an Obi Wan Kenobi for Star Wars. Why don't we have a female Obi Wan Kenobi? We have a Luke Skywalker. Why don't he have a female? And that's how they want to balance the world. But that is not how it works. I pray to Allah this small whatever I want to call it, it's not a toy, it's not something, would help you make a right decision about this horrible, horrible, horrible uh, series called The Acolyte by this loser Leslie Headland, who thinks we are threatened by her stupidity. No, we're not. It's just getting 14% and going down. I pray to Allah to safeguard us all and help us get back to him in the best of the states as he delivered us to this world. I pray to Allah to protect our children from these sexual diseases and help us all get in this life with less, less problems as other people. Again, this is your brother Abdul Salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.